shut the engine down so I can talk a little bit easier here um, and taking a look at this. And actually, give me one second. I just got to go ahead and connect my battery power here to my laptop. It looks like I didn't do that. And I don't want it to run out of battery as we are filming. All right, let's hook that guy up here. All right. So now we can actually move in here specifically to a area here for transient tuning. And in here, we can see we have our two different areas that we were testing out. Idle, or off idle, I should say, just kind of blipping the throttle, and then at 3000 RPM. So let's focus in here and take a look at what we're finding. Now, when I was giving it throttle on the dyno at 3000 RPM, it felt relatively uh, crisp in the throttle response. I didn't notice that it had a lag or had a hesitant hes feeling that I found when I was at the lower RPM. So we're gonna have to unpack this and figure out exactly what we have going on here. Now, what we wanna take a look at in reviewing this is we wanna make sure that we have our engine speed up here. We wanna make sure we have our lambda, that's what the actual lambda sensor is registering and reading, what our lambda target is showing. And then what we have here for, in this case, our rate of change in throttle. We wanna see what our Excel fueling is doing here and the decel fueling I'm not worried about. So let's go and actually zoom in here, pretty, pretty uh, for focused in. We're gonna find, once I start to have a throttle change, here's our D throttle position, so I give it some throttle input. We're gonna find that's a pretty decent size change, about 15% per second. We're gonna find that the lambda sensor went here from about 10 lambda, 10 lambda target, and I blip the throttle. We can see manifold pressure jumps right up to atmospheric. And we're finding here that the lambda sensor starts to show lean. But if we look past this, it shows here at about 94 lambda. Now, this is gonna be something we have to note. There is a decent amount of lag in the wideband sensor registration and reading when we're looking at low RPM. So by the time the lambda sensor actually registers the combustion event, it's almost a, a delay window we have to factor in there. So I did give it some throttle input here. It did show lean on the wideband, but then where it actually, if we look at the actual injector pulse width, the injector pulse width richened up probably right here. And then beyond that, that's kind of what we want to look at for our lambda value. So here it's about 93 lambda. That seems relatively reasonable. If we look here at our next event that I went ahead and I blipped the throttle, this was a smaller D throttle position change. We're going to find here, I blip the throttle. It shows that it goes lean. And then beyond that, it shows here that about 97 lambda. I'm gonna say if I kind of split the difference between where the event happened right here and where it showed the actual air fuel reading, so about this far, that's gonna show me that it is kind of lean right there. I wanna go ahead and probably richen that up. If I look here where the event happened to right here, again, I guess showing a little bit lean. So we're looking here about maybe a tenth to two tenths of a second later. And then we can see beyond that what that fueling was doing. That's when everything kind of dissipated. Again, here we're blipping it. You can see I blipped the throttle right here is the event. And then we're finding that it's really registering what's going Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.